I always like to start off my presentations with a quote, and usually my favorite quote of the year, and in this case, it happens to be really relevant with what I want to talk about, but you know how when you take somebody in your office and you bring them in your office and you sit them down and you say, this is the way things are going to be, and you just go out there and do that, and you go out there and look at it and go, no, 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 no. And then I think that that is exactly kind of what's happening at retail. I think for the last four or five years, almost anybody uh, who's been in this business or that can look at retail objectively has looked at it and said, you need to make some changes. You need to do this and you need to bring, do buy online, pick up store, and you need to ship to home and you need to do all this different stuff. And everybody's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they, then they don't really do it. And then they don't really kind of understand why it needs to be done or understand what the customer is and what the customer wants. So anyway, I thought it was a really super relevant quote and I think we're gonna use that, that face. That face is kind of awesome, don't you think? We're gonna use that throughout that. Uh, and all this comes from this paper that we, we just completed literally this week, and I mean it this time. Uh, it's called Apocalypse to Relevance. Don't let the word mall fool you because we're thinking shopping centers and when we ask questions in terms of research, we ask them, like, what can you do to make stores more relevant? How can you get stores, how can you get people to go back to stores? Because there's a lot of reasons why people aren't going to stores. And so this study will come out, and at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you an URL. Take a picture of the URL, and you can download it for free. Absolutely. The number one word in marketing, free. So uh, two-second commercial, really, two slides. I work for a company that's called WD Partners, as I said last night. And we call ourselves thinkers that do. In other words, we're always thinking about, even if you're thinking in strategy, you're thinking like, how are we ever gonna get this thing built? Are we gonna show these guys a spaceship? No, we're not. And then the guys that are building the spaceships are thinking, you know, I'd like to think about how to make that a little bit better. And so then a reason is, as you look across the bottom there, all those services that we have from strategy and insights to operations, planning, construction services, design, all those we have in-house, several different offices around the world, 300 and some employees. End of commercial. So uh, now for agenda, really quick, I'm gonna talk about some things that have happened that make sense and then also kind of why we did this research in the first place. And then I'm gonna show you the research, so that's gonna be the new news. I'm gonna do one of my uh, classic one-page summary reports, which uh, you know, hopefully will walk away with learning something. So in terms of understood, when we think about understood, we think about retail as we knew it, is pretty much over. Everything that we used to think about retail, and you, you would think like, well, uh, you know, even 15 years ago, you're gonna ship merchandise into a store, you're gonna merchandise it really well. And some of the fundamentals, I don't mean to take away from fundamentals like really good associates and stuff like that, because that's gonna exist forever. But without a doubt, retail, as we once knew it, and almost everybody in this room, I can look at you guys and see that you knew when retail was a lot different than it is right now just for starters, and I'm gonna go through a couple of these in real quick succession, and there's like 50 of them, but I'm gonna give you only 10 of them. Footfalls have been down between five and 10% over the course of the last 10 to 12 years on and off. Now sure, you know, Walmart's gonna come around and go, yeah, we, we had an increase of 1%, or I think they had an increase of 0.7% last year. That's gonna happen, there's gonna be anomalies, but overall in retail, and that's without gas stations, gasoline, and that type of thing, 10%, so people just don't go to stores anymore. I love reading those articles about Gen Z and uh, millennials. They, they prefer to shop in stores. Well, they don't. That's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty apparent. And then you know the other side of the hockey stick is there, there's a reverse hockey stick and that e-commerce has is, is just been taking off. And I, I don't really have to tell you that. That number though is wrong. I just saw something in Fortune the other day that it's 525 billion they expect this year, 525, so way over the top of that 500 number. And then this is really kind of cool. I just threw this in here the day before yesterday, non-store retail share of uh, total sales. So in other words, e-commerce, right? But take out auto dealers, gasoline stations, restaurants, and bars, and that's what you get. You get a number close to 20%. And everybody says, well, you know, even last year, I think I was reading things, well, it's nine to, you know, uh, e-commerce sales is nine to 12%. That's not really true. That's not really true, like, at all. And I, I just saw where Abercrombie and Fitch, Urban Outfitters, all these specialty retailers were lining up American Eagles saying they do more than a third of their business online. 
That's another reason that stores, people don't go to stores that much. And then we have artificial intelligence where uh, this really is a game changer in that you start to tell something, hey, I'd like to buy some t-shirts. Show me the, Alexa, show me the best t-shirts. From where? Alexa picks. Hey, show me the best toothpaste, Alexa. She shows you what toothpaste, toothpaste is the best toothpaste. You don't pick that anymore. I mean, that really, really changes the game. And 25 million sold, that was in January. So that's probably at least 50 million. You throw Google's thing in there, it's even higher than that. So much so that Amazon said now that they're gonna add eight different machines to their Echo, whatever it is, Echo Park, I don't know. But they got a lot of different machines on there. 25 million sold going into this year. That's a phenomenal number. So there's pretty much one in just about every kitchen. And then the reason we have this, this uh, conference at all is because we call it Retail Spaces, and nothing has changed more than spaces. So this is a store on the west side of Chicago that was put up by Vans called the House of Vans. And the first thing you look at is like, where's the merchandise? There is no merchandise. So you go to a Vans store and you go there for experience. You go there to skateboard, you go there to listen to a band, you go there to hang out with people. And this is really kind of what retail is evolving to, other than maybe on a discount level where you can just buy the cheapest things possible. If you really are a Vans customer, you buy your stuff online and then you go to the store and you use it. So doing and selling is becoming very popular. And we just pulled this off the other day too. It's a company called Made.com out of London. And I thought you guys would really like it because it's a furniture store. So within that, I don't know if you could see on each one of those little squares up there's a piece of furniture. So you take your phone and you scan it and then eventually you can build yourself a showroom that looks like that over in the other corner. So you put together that showroom just by looking at the little scans and those little objects that you saw in the beginning, which I thought was super. It's like one of the stores of the future. And in this store, Matches.com. Matches.com is an e-tailer, which has also been a trend, as you guys know. But another reason maybe to go to stores or to not go to stores, Matches.com will put you in high-end clothes like Prada and Calvin Klein and things like that. They just opened a studio in London with five stores on it. And one of, the, one of the rooms looks like that, where you get all this attention. It's one at a time, they'll come and talk to you and you sit down and they'll measure your feet and you get the right kind of shoes. Interesting about matches.com is that they understand a lot about what I'm gonna tell you in this study and that they have one floor out of their five floors, which are only about that big, like it looks like an apartment, that's a restaurant. So you sit down and you get something to eat and then you go shop and then you go and you move around the area. And this is a quote from the guy that actually founded that company. This isn't about revenue. I just felt that like this is really relevant to physical spaces nowadays. This isn't about revenue at retail. It's about the experience and the collateral that we can produce. So by coming into that place and getting fitted or getting something to eat or understanding what the place looks like and looking around, you understand that that brand, Matches.com, you go home and you buy that stuff online. But you created a lot of collateral in the physical space. So did every other one of those spaces that I showed you, especially like Vans, somebody like Vans. And then an actual store, the Nordstrom local store, they said that they, they announced that they're gonna open three more. It's predominantly used for buy online, pick up and store, and a lot of different things like trying things on and testing things and doing makeup and spa stuff. But still, there's other Nordstrom stores in the town, but why not go there and pick up your merchandise? And then Nike just opened a store also on Melrose, not too far from local, that you take your Nike app, as long as you have your Nike app, you can use it to buy merchandise, to buy merchandise either at a discount or some kind of different rate. And then finally, buy online, pick up and store is being done right. Walmart's doing it right, Target's doing it right. This is just a, a model of how to do it right, because they're not doing that many of them. But you, I think four years ago, right, Mark? I mean, we did a test where we tested BOPIS, and people wanted, you, wanted to pull up to your store, and you come, and you put it in the trunk. And that happened. And then Amazon Go, Amazon Go, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, they, we were talking about this just a little while ago where they said they're going to open 30,000 stores by the year 2021. And uh, we have an expression at WD Partners that the higher the number of stores that you say you're going to open per year is the higher the degree of bullshit. <laughs> so I think that's especially true. Like if you, ju you just do the simple math on that, that's 30 stores a week, you know, four or five stores a day. That, 
that's, that's probably not gonna happen. Nonetheless, it's really cool technology that I think is gonna become more pervasive because you better believe like everybody and their brother went into that store and tried to figure out, Mark, you were in there, and try to figure out how to get that done. I think the other cool thing about that, and, and we talked to a number of different retailers and even bankers about this, is like how do you introduce new technology at retail one of the things that Amazon did better than anything that you've probably never seen a picture of is they have like 15 people at the door. So when you come in, they go, you don't, so here's how you go in. You take this app and you download the app. Go ahead, download the app. Now go in and you know, click this and then go in there and put the stuff, just scan the stuff. And if anything you know, buzzes when you come out, just let me know. But there's a person telling a person. The same way the airlines did that when they brought technology to life, and you thought, oh my God, I don't want to go there. I want to go to, the, I don't want to, go to some damn kiosk. I want to talk to a person. But they had somebody there to show you to do it. The next thing you know, I have an app. I don't think I've talked to an airline person in, in years. And I think that that's happening true. Um, the other thing that's going on is monopsony. Do you guys know what a monopsony is? It is, it is the, the technical definition is one single buyer in a marketplace. And nowadays, more than ever, there's monopsonies all over the place. So Amazon is a monopsony. Google is a monopsony. Facebook is a monopsony. Apple's kind of a, a monopsony, monopsony uh, as well. One major player per industry. The super cool thing about that is that uh, you can look at the retail industry and go, wow, retail is doing really great. But at the same time, uh, wages don't go up and things like that. So anyway, that's for a different presentation. So, um, you know, Jeff, I guess, you know, it's understood that retail's really sort of changed forever. And everybody in this room, I think, completely understands that. The retail, what it was 20 years ago, is just a completely different game. All your jobs have changed. My job has changed. Mark's job has changed, which is a miracle. And anybody else's job that's involved with retail has changed as well. We started to do this research for one reason because we started to ask this question because retailers, and this is a typical reason why we'll do research, retailers came up to us and said, what about all those empty spaces that are out there? Like what happens to the empty Sears? All the Sears are going out of business. Can I go in there and put a big gym? Can I go in there and put in a big grocery store? And can I go in there and put this in there? Can I put the fitness center in there? Can I put this in there? And so we decided to ask consumers what would you do? Would, like, what would you like to see there that would drive visitation? And the, the main question was, are malls as we know them over? Like, is it the mall itself? Like, we kind of forgot about malls. We just think, like, well, malls are dead. Nobody goes to the mall anymore. And so malls are closing and this type of thing. But in reality, there's a lot of retail space open that is still extremely viable. So we thought we'd ask consumers, would you go back to this place? If we put these things in there, maybe, and one of the answers was no. So I'll show you the results. Just a, a tad, a couple of stats first. Uh, this, I think we got out of Fortune Magazine, 25% of malls. There's 1,150 malls in the United States alone. 25% of them, so there, there's only gonna be about 700 malls in the United States within the next five years. So 25% of them are already gonna close. Start with that. So now you've got a lot fewer malls. You've got a lot fewer malls, but you've got a lot more viable malls than you did in the first place. And it's a little like retail itself that we opened way too many stores. We shouldn't have had as many stores as we did. We had a, we had a store bubble. That store bubble is coming down to something more realistic now. Same thing happening with malls. But what's interesting about that, if you take a look at this graphic, which I just got, uh, this, it's happening in the C malls. So again, I, you know, to a certain extent, they probably shouldn't, we probably shouldn't open them. It's kind of like C-level and D-level stores. When I worked, I worked for Limited for 11 years, and we had a bunch of C stores. We even had some D stores. We opened stores in Peoria, Illinois, and, you know, Springfield, Illinois, where Abraham Lincoln was born. I mean, there's like 12 people there. We opened a store. That store probably deserved to close. Anyway, if you picture B malls, which weren't with this, they're probably somewhere in between, between 5 and 6% vacancy. And if Sears goes out, or if Penny's goes out, or Macy's goes out, and all those guys are closing hundreds of stores a year, or if any big retailers go out, then you've got a lot of space, you've got people going to a space that have been going to a space for years, but you've got empty space that could be usable by other retailers, including people in this room. 
and just some classic shots. Uh, take a look at a mall nowadays, and you, there's no need to wonder why people go to malls or why people have stopped going to malls or why 25% of sea level malls have closed. I took this shot in Columbus, Ohio at about 2 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. Not a soul. I mean, I could have bowled in there if I wanted to bowl, right? So the question is, like, is this going to happen? You know, are we just going to have these big empty spaces? It seems like there could be some use for them. So again, we asked consumers. Um, and our research, the, the research that we did, we asked over 3,000 customers or people, demographics, same as, uh, match as the United States. I have digital natives and digital immigrants there. We, we surveyed everybody. But for the purposes of this demonstration, which I thought before the guy canceled was only going to be 20 minutes, so I had to go fast. Uh, digital natives being 29, people, 29 years old and under, digital immigrants 46 years old and over. Just to show you the disparity in the way those two groups think, because every single study that we've ever done has been a massive difference between digital natives and digital immigrants. Uh, we stayed fairly whatever, you know, we didn't, we didn't go low income at all. And the question that we asked involved the top two boxes. So we said, would you increase visitation? Would you go back to this place? And would you purchase, was another one of the questions, uh, top two, uh, rank it from one to seven. So all the percentages I'm going to show you from now on, and I'm not going to tell you again, but you're welcome to ask me, are the top two boxes only. So if you see 62%, that's 62% of the people asked out of these 3,000, or the digital natives, or whatever it was, said top two boxes. Are you with me? OK, here we go. So here's what we asked them. We asked them about 12 different concepts. Like, and what we got these from is from trends that were happening in the United States today. What if we put a, a beauty mega store in there? Would you go back? What if we put BOPUS, buy online, pick up, and store? So the buy online, pick up, and store, we meant for them all. For, for the shopping center. So you put something there. Would you drive up there? Would you buy something from Ann Taylor, from Abercrombie and & Fitch, and from Nordstrom? And you, then they put it in a box outside, like a locker outside. You pulled up, and you grabbed it, and you ran. Would you shop more often? We also asked them about co-working space. There's a lot of conversation about WeWorks and the popularity of WeWorks, the gig economy. Like, what if a Sears went out, and we put a big WeWorks in there? And believe me, that's been a question. So what would happen? What do consumers think about that? Farmer's market. So here's a, a funny stat we found out by doing this about farmer's markets. Four years ago, there was, only, there was less than 4,000 farmer's markets in the United States. Now there's almost 9,000. So in four years, we've over doubled the number of farmer's markets. Who knew? Uh, fitness center, you, you can imagine you know, fitness centers are very popular in the United States, very popular with young people. A food hall. And I'll show you pictures of the food hall that we showed. Like, would you like this? Would you, would you visit them all if we showed you this? And it's not a food court. It's a food hall. It's like food trucks. It rotates all the time. It's a place to hang out. It's got fireplaces, the whole nine yards. I'll show you. Uh, green space. So instead of a center court, you had a big place where you know, there was actually trees and, and uh, grass and places that you could go and fountains and things like that. Uh, grocery store. What if a grocery store came in when a JCPenney went out? Like, would you come back to the mall? Would you go back and visit the mall? Uh, health and wellness, and health and wellness is huge. There's a lot of conversation about health and wellness becoming more like retail. So why couldn't health and wellness be in a place where people are already going instead of some freestanding unit out somewhere in the middle of nowhere? Excuse me, and if you have kids, you know what indoor sports is. It's like that place where you take your kid to play softball in the winter, or you play indoor soccer, or you play lacrosse, or, and you know what I mean. Uh, showroom stores, we've tested showroom stores three different times, and they, they always tested well. They tested well, well here again, too. And basically, it's a store where you come in that has one of a kind, you scan it, it gets shipped to your house. Bonobos is a great example of the, that store. And then finally, we asked them about none. So by none, and the way we described it was, would you care if the mall went away? So what if we put none of the stuff in there and the mall just went away, like everything closed, the Sears closed, and it all closed? Would you care? So we asked them that. So we asked them all these things. Now, because of time, or what I thought I had time, 
Uh, I'm gonna show you a lot of numbers right now, and I severely apologize. But remember, at the end of this, you can download this paper for free, and they're split out really nicely. <laughs> so here they go. Are you ready? I made the excuse. Um, on the left is digital natives. On the right is digital immigrants. So again, 29 and under, 46 and over on the right-hand side. And one of the first things you notice, I'm just going to give you some high levels on this, is that the digital natives liked everything a lot more than the digital immigrants did. A lot more. I'm talking about 30 points in top two boxes. The numbers were similar in, ter in terms of total. So digital natives looks to us like people under 29 years old really wanted to see that mall change. They wanted all that stuff. And so you know, for top two boxes, and the way we think about top two boxes, 40% in top two boxes is something that you should test. 60% means that the, anything, 60% and above means that the customer's way ahead of you. Like, oh my God, you should have tested that a while ago because the customers are like, yeah, dummy, you, know, you should have opened that thing. And the other interesting thing is food. Look how high food ranked. Food ranked really high with digital immigrants. It also ranked high with digital natives, but nonetheless, food, food concepts, you know, food halls, grocery stores, farmers markets, things like that, draw people back into these open spaces. Having spent some time in Europe recently over the course of the last couple of years, there's food in a lot of stores there. A lot of stores in London have opened where you can walk in, the first thing they ask you is, you, you want a little bit of espresso before you look around? Would you like a piece of chocolate? It's like, yeah, especially since you're jet lagged, you know, beyond all hell. Uh, but nonetheless, like food is part of retail. Why not serve the customer something? And you can really see it in these numbers. Last but not least about this kind of eye chart is the none number. So if you look at digital immigrants, people over 46 years old don't want to see that mall go away at all, really. I mean, they like the mall. They want to go to the mall. There's a lot of things that they'd like to see change, especially more food and the health and wellness center rank pretty high with them as well, but they don't want to see it go away. The none number for digital natives, we're going to talk about that, I think, a little bit more coming up. So now I'm going to show you some of the pictures that we showed them and asked them to rank. So, and the numbers on the left are the digital natives, top two boxes. So 78%, 80%, they're like, yeah, you dummy. We should have these in malls right now, a food hall. This is a food hall in Copenhagen, and I took this picture myself. And there's a little balcony that you go up there and you take it, it's right on the water place, and it's called a food hall, only it's called it in Danish and I can't say it. Uh, but there, you can see on the left, there's a fireplace, there's food trucks that they rolled in and out of there, there's all kinds of things that move. There's a place in the center where you can just sit and you can hang out. That place is packed, it's packed every night. They opened it less than a year ago, it's just packed with people, people of all ages, kids, everybody. This is a food hall in Alberta. Uh, one of my guys pulled, it must have been snowing outside, but there's, there's nobody there, but you get the idea. It's not a food court, it's something completely different. Farmer's market is a farmer's market. The farmer's market was number one to the di digital immigrants and uh, a little bit higher, but not number one for the natives. So a farmer's market is kind of a big deal. Like how do you do a farmer's market to a, in a space, a shop, whether it's a shopping center or a retail space where you could draw more people? Green space is green space. This is the BOPUS picture that we showed them. And basically with this picture, we're saying, you have to pull up, you bought all this stuff from this mall, you're number five there, you got X code, you punch in that code, you take your stuff out, you go home. So you could shop at a mall on your way home, no shipping, no nothing, it would be sitting there waiting for you. 74%, remember 60 means that the customer's way ahead of you. So having one of these buy online, pick up in the store, not just for Walmart, and not just for Target, but for shopping centers, would be a big deal to revive the shopping center. You'd get people to go there. This indoor sports complex, another 72%. <laughs> this is like, this is a game I definitely have to play. Where is it? A trampoline dodgeball. I mean, what could be better? The only thing that could be better would be trampoline volleyball. Because you could actually understand what it feels like to kind of slam one down on somebody. But 72%, uh, grocery 62%, I'm gonna show you a few 62%. But if you're Whole Foods, 
you got to think like, wow, I could grab an old Sears space and I could, I could put a Whole Foods at the back end of this mall. It would draw the mall. If you're a developer, you got to think, I need to get grocery stores where, where these guys, Sears and those guys are going out of business. Or a shopping center. Or, you know, like a 15,000 square foot. I have a Whole Foods in my neighborhood. It's 25,000 square feet. That's not that big. A fitness center is a fitness center. It could be LA Fitness, could be any one of those guys, but a fitness center would definitely draw more people to them all. So would a beauty megastore. And I have to say, I thought a beauty megastore would be by far number one, but it wasn't. And maybe because there's so many already, or there's so many different uh, beauty stores there. And showroom pop-up stores, we've had over 55% rankings, top two boxes for showroom stores now for three different studies, three different years in a row. It's definitely something that retailers, specialty retailers, should try. And a co-working space, in terms of ranking, ranked a little bit lower, but a 53% number is still pretty good. Health and wellness, 52%, a couple different health and wellnesses. And then this none number for digital natives, to me, is a little bit scary because we're starting to broach on almost a third of young people not giving a shit. They don't care if the mall goes away. So if the tenant mix continues, if we don't do something about it, if we don't do some of these other things, and, and I'm not saying that what we showed, all the answers, there's a lot of different answers, but they want to see that mix change. And you saw the numbers uh, for, as an aggregate compared to the immigrants' numbers who have been shopping there for a long time. Young people want to see the whole thing change. If it doesn't change, that number starts to go over a third, it's going to be a problem. Those are your shoppers of the future. Another thing we asked is, if you could add one more thing to your favorite thing, what would it be? Food. That's what it would be. If you would have picked fitness center, you would have also picked your second thing might have been a farmer's market, a food hall, or a grocery. So it's food. Food is very, very lucrative and could draw a lot of people. The other thing is we asked the aggregate. We asked everybody, if you could put multiples of these right now in a shopping center, in a mall, uh, in some places that have closed, the big Sears stores and stuff like that, would it increase your visitation? Because 64%, remember we said 60%, the customer's way ahead of you, customer's way ahead of us in terms of that. They want to see a lot of different changes when it comes to this. So, I probably beat my 20 minutes, but, or 25 minutes, but uh, the Tomorrow Mall, it's kind of like this. We've got to change a lot of that damn thing. There's some things that can, that can stay the same, but in terms of like some of the malls that I've seen are still like specialty store after specialty store after specialty store after specialty store. That's not what people want to see anymore. They want to see it mixed. They want to see a place where they can go play. They want to see a place where they might be able to pick up some food on the way home. They don't want to go there for just one reason, to go to the Abercrombie store anymore, to go to the American Eagle store. It's not like that anymore. And that's why people don't go there enough now. That's why 25% of them are closing, because there's only one or two reasons to go there. But if there's multiple reasons to go there, I think it'll change dramatically. Here's an example, the, the hill in Dallas. And this is just a sketch. It hasn't been built. But I felt like this is the best thing that we found that summarizes what we're talking about. There's a grocery store. There's green space. There's places to walk. There's sit places to sit down. There's other stores to go to in different places. It doesn't really look like a town. You know, it kind of looks like a gathering space all into itself. You could meet somebody there. You could do a lot of different things. You don't just go there to go to a specialty store. And um, this place is this Hudson Yard. We, we did two restaurants uh, in this. And if you've been to New York City, you've seen this structure. I mean, it's pretty unbelievable. I was walking to NRF in January, and I was on 33rd, and I looked south, and I saw this thing. I mean, it's unbelievable. I wouldn't go up there. <laughs> I mean, the top one leans over like, you know, 15 stories. You've got to be, you gotta be crazy. Um, this is the Westfield people that did this Destination 2028, and as they listed it, it doesn't really show up quite so well here, but one of the things, that everything that we talked about, they listed in here. So there's a WeWork type of space down in a basement. There's a grocery store. There's a lot of different things here. The only thing I don't like about it, again, is those rows of the boxes, the stores that you see up to the right and to the left. Uh, this is a place called HiO, O-H. Uh, HiO in um, Brooklyn that opened up that has, that'll bring brands in. They do basically showroom stores. The brands pop up, and there's seven or eight of those brands that, that pop up, and they change them all the time. And, 
The thing about them is they're, they're brands from Europe or they're brands from California. They're not just the same old brands that are in a department store on Fifth Avenue. So to answer the question, malls as we knew them are over. They're done. People don't want them anymore. And especially young people. Young people, are the more we aggravate the young people and don't change them, the more they won't go. So a quick summary. Malls are not dead. They're not dead yet. And especially for older people, they're not dead at all. And people talk about the malls are dead. And they're, they're not dead. There's no apocalypse happening in the mall. One of the things that's important to go forward with is food. Some form of food. Maybe it's some food you, food you serve in a store. Maybe it's a grocery store. There's a lot of different ways to do food. But food is important. Tenant mix is also important. And I think that's one of the things that has to happen to kind of revitalize a lot of these spaces, whether you're revitalizing a shopping area that's in a town or whether you're revitalizing the mall. One of the things that will increase visitation is a dramatic mix change. So um, I started with a quote and I'm gonna end with a quote. This quote, you know my fun days are over, reminded me of the malls. Your fun days are over, you can't just open a store, stack up a bunch of stuff in it and be fine and walk away with it. The thing about this quote that I like the most is, it's James Dean's last words. <laughs> so he said, you know, my fun days are over, and he fell over dead. Nobody likes that. I'm the only one that likes that. <laughs> I think that's pretty funny. I'm like, well, <clears throat> true story. Uh, I do not have to forgive my enemies. I've had them all shot by a Spanish general. And uh, that reminded me of this guy. A little bit. I think we're, we're only about this far away from that quote being his. And that's the end of that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lee.